up, everybody? What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, Is This, this gonna, gonna Cause an, an Argument? It kind of sounded like a little bit of a lisp came out with you right then. Is Why that what's with me? I was just asking. Was it, that... I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> it was an autopilot. Marcus is still drunk out here. <laughs> I ain't drunk. I just didn't sleep good. Uh, uh, this is a weekly podcast hosted by me, that chick angel. I am the host, as I already said. And beside me is my husband of 14 years. My boyfriend of 17, you keep trying to say 16, so I don't know what Look, you man. were with the first year, but you all in between. See, I don't even know. It could have been in between. <sighs> this is the other host, my husband. Tell them who you are. Can I talk now? I guess so. It was <laughs> 6 um, <laughs> o'clock in the morning, and I realized my <laughs> I'm the other host. Marcus ain't on the gram. Tank. What else is it? Marcus Anthony. Yeah. Marcus ain't on the book. That heifer. Yeah. Big Tank Marcus. of Tanks Riders. Big Marcus. Yeah. Amar's daddy. Mm -hmm. Angel's husband. That's what they call me. That's all the aliases I get. <laughs> um, uh, that dude from Bald and Beautiful. There it is. The Zoom In guy. <laughs> Zoom In. That, it's coming. It's coming. The Zoom In shirt's coming. And then we have our third host who's been on vacation. He's joining us today. He was also a little sick. Tell him who you are. Say hi. Exactly. That would yeah. be Amar, the landlord, the slumlord. When you want me to make noise, I'm quiet. But when, when you, you don't... want me quiet, I be making noise. <laughs> I be making noise. AKA Amar. No, you just said <laughs> hi. Say it again louder. Say hi. All right. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Well, today <laughs> we have some wonderful sponsors that we're going to tell you about later on the show. Tell them who they are, baby. They are Apostrophe, uh -huh. Better Help, and Magic Spoon. You did it! Yeah. So yeah, I, st I purposely <laughs> stopped writing when she asked me that. Uh, you would have been like, Apo dash! Apostra Spoon! <laughs> <laughs> so... Stick around. You will hear more about those sponsors later on in this podcast. Um, and when yes. you do, support them so they support us and we support y'all. Hey. It goes full circle. Come on. We also want to give a huge shout out for the people that make us fly, the people that pull up and burn out. They are our Patreon. They Absolutely. are our Angel Wings and our Tanks Riders. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. All they of that. are in the building right now. They're watching us live so they can see Amar with this huge band-aid on his forehead. Mm -hmm. They can see me in my caftan and my bouncy red head. They can oh, yeah. uh, see my husband in his freshly groomed beard. And it ain't groomed. It's groomed, baby. It's not. Mm, you look great. Thank you. <laughs> um, you too can watch this um, on my YouTube channel, That Chick Angel TV. You can also see other footage of us on Tanksley TV. Please subscribe. We actually have some footage we're going to upload today. Yep. That is backlog that needs to go up. But you can also join our Patreon and see us shoot this live at www.patreon.com slash <coughs> there you go, slash cough cough. No, slash that chick angel. <coughs> now, the last time y'all saw Amar on here, he was sick. Yeah. Then he had a full recovery. Yeah. Then, last night, after... His rager of a party. It was, I mean, he made Lollapalooza look, uh, well, whatever it's called, Lollipalooza. How y'all say it? Palooza, that too. He made that look silly. Yeah, That's yeah. how he was partying. All right. Anybody that gets a band aid on their head right before the party starts, you know they're here to party. They're here to party. Bam, 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 bam. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and start off this episode with a um, segment we like to call Tanksley. Mm -hmm. Pride story. Absolutely. We call our kids Tanksley Pride on Instagram. So this is what, um, and you can follow them on Instagram at Tanksley Pride. Yes, baby. Already. Okay. You want an apple? No. You got food. We're going to feed you. So we're going to start off with Tanksley Pride story. These are stories about our kids. I'm going to let you kick it off. I'm going to put him at the table with his food. Right. And uh, you tell him the story you want to tell him. So. I got a couple things I want to uh, tell y'all. So, Amar's yesterday, of course, uh, we celebrated his birthday. Um, we had a jumpy house. So, all the kids, of course, are excited about the jumpy house. It showed up a couple of hours before the party start uh, started. And Amar, he's all about it. So, I went in. Well, I, I tried to go in. I couldn't. I wouldn't fit. 
So I had Marcus go in and disinfect the whole thing, you know, all on the outside, all on the inside, because, you know, you can't trust these companies and uh, whether they're going to clean stuff. You, they rent these things out. They probably rented that thing out three times this weekend. Um, so anyway, had Marcus disinfect, spray everything down. I let it dry. Finally let them go in. And uh, Amara, so you know how they has like a little ramp, like steps coming out of the jumpy houses. That's exactly what this one had. So Amara's been in there jumping around, and I guess he forgot how hard the ground is. Because he's jumping, he comes out, he's continued to jump, and before we could even correct him or get over to him, it wasn't even we, it was me. I was starting up the grill. He jumps, jumps, and then jumps off the steps onto the ground. And he's been doing this thing where he saw Kai um, run and slide on his knees. But Kai has on pajamas when he does it, so he slides across the floor. So Amar only sees Kai jumping up and landing on his knees. So that's what Amar's been doing. That's his version. He ain't running. He's just jumping up and landing on his knees. And that's the same thing he tried to mimic jumping off the jumpy house steps onto the uh, pave pavement in our backyard. Well, of course, he lands wrong. He hurts his knees and hits his head on the concrete. Not really hit, but he scraped it on the concrete because he like fell forward. It wasn't like a bang, it was like a scoot. So he got a little road rash right there on his forehead. He cried, I went on and put a band-aid on it. Um, and that's where that came from. It was like, I, and you know, it wasn't even that he cried for a little bit, not a whole lot, but I was more mad that we didn't have any black people band-aids. I was mad about that uh, Caucasian Band-Aid I had to put on my babies. <laughs> I, I didn't realize we had more of those. I told Marcus to go get the first aid kit and a Band-Aid, and that's what he came back with. But uh, but he's good now. He was good minutes later. But it was a good way to start his party. Oh, yeah. That's uh, how he gets it started. Let's what, you got an Amara story? Because I got, you... I got a couple of things. What, what else? No, I wanted you to hit them with the whammy. I was going to tell about the birthday story. You got to oh, hit them with the oh, wham, the wham, bam, So thank also, you, also Amara. Also, Amar, he has now, he's now on night number three of sleeping in his crib by himself all night. Uh, the first night, let me start at the top. The first night I tried it, um, <laughs> well, no, no, no. Yeah, the first night, so it, the what would be back four nights, I've been waiting for him to fall asleep before I put him in the crib. And I was like, that's where I'm messing up. Because I put him in his crib while he sleep, he'll wake up. Early, early morning, crying, I go get him, put him in the bed, go back to sleep. I said, that's why I'm messing up because Angel's not here. He's not going to really care about being in the bed with me. Um, it'll be a lot easier to get him to, you know, agree to go to bed and not worry about anything. So three nights ago, I uh, put him in the bed, put him in his crib. Uh, and I was like, night, night. So I laid him down. And he didn't say anything. I, I came downstairs. I was cleaning up and everything. And I hear, first he was crying. I was like, all right. I'm like, he, he's going to cry. He'll be all right. He started crying finally, about 10 minutes after being in there. And then he stops crying. I don't hear nothing for about five minutes. I'm like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, I hear, daddy. I said, oh, no. I ain't going to be able to do it. If he does that and cries, that's the recipe. I'm going to have to go get him. I'm going to be yeah. old punk. I'm going to have to go get him. If he if he yells daddy and crying, I'm like, all right, I ain't going to be able to ignore that. But he didn't. He just yelled daddy. So I'm like, waited. About two, three minutes later, he, daddy, he yells it again. I'm like, all right, you can do this, Marcus. Uh -huh. You can do this. And that's all he did. He went on to sleep. He slept all night. He didn't wake up the next morning until like 8 o'clock, I think. Um, so that was a success. I'm like, cool. So then the next night came, he, he, uh, that's when I had to go, I had to go make a run, a late night run. I had all the boys with me. Y'all might hear about that mm -hmm. sooner or later. I don't know. But as soon as y'all, if it does get put on blast, you will know exactly what run I was doing. Um, so the, yeah, the next night I, I, uh, he ended up falling asleep because we were out late or whatever. And again, he slept all night. No, no, no. Was that when I gave him the bath? Uh, no, because he was already asleep. But the next night would have been last night, right? No. Okay, so the following night, so he slept all night again. It was a success, but he fell asleep. So the following night, the next night, I was like, okay, I need to actively put him in the bed. He needs to understand. So I gave him a bath, all the boys. They all took baths and showers and stuff. I gave him a bath, put pajamas on him, stood over his crib, 
I kissed him on his cheek and I was like, it's time to go night night. When I tell you, as soon as I said that, he looked at his crib and he looked at me and the look on his face said, you disloyal mm -hmm. mother. You are. <laughs> he you had are the most disloyal. disgusted look on his face. <laughs> I was like, is that how you feel? I was like, it's time to go night night. And I said it again, just see if he was going to get upset. But he just looked at me, but I laid him down. He laid down, and he looked up at me, he grabbed his water bottle, he pulled his blanket over him, laid his head down, and just started looking around and talking. I was like, all right, mm -hmm. is this where we at? I closed the door. I, they, he has a dimmer right by his, uh, a dimmer light right by his door at the top, so I dimmed that, like, almost to where it was off, just so he could see a little bit. He slept all night, and then again, then the big test was when Angel got back. Yes. I was like, this is going to be the challenge. If he knows she's in this house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know. All right. <laughs> Tell your story. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shay. Something just caught my attention. You thought Angel had some new pictures of herself up on the screen. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so the big test, the big challenge is going to be once he knows his mama's in the house. But again, last night he was downstairs. You know, Angel had him. I took him. He laid his head on my shoulder like he usually does. I took him upstairs. Same thing. Laid it, changed his diaper, laid him down. I said, night, night. And he laid on down. No whimper, no cry. And didn't wake up to just now when y'all saw us go live. I just, I can't even, well, I knew that Marcus would have a less hard of a time than I would. That yeah. I knew for without a shadow of a doubt. But the fact, but, oh, go no, ahead. But before you jump to your tank's pride, I got one, something else. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not okay. coming out of the all story. Right, right. The fact that you were able to do this in a matter of three days, three days? I just knew. I was like, my kids love to give me a hard time just because they can. And Yeah, and that was the thing. I knew it would be easy with Angel not being here. And you all saying Marcus is a softie? Yes. Yeah, I'm a softie. He is. Through and through. With all of them. So soft. Just. I am. And with that... Oh, I got... Yeah, I got no time for it. With that said, so last week, we had Sai come in here. Yes. And so I was in here crying. Boo hoo. And, and y'all saw Angel's laughing. react. Yeah, I was laughing because it was funny just trying to hear him talk. Oh, that's something I want to address real quick. I just scrolled down through the comments, list to everybody. Oh, oh no. yeah, Marcus, yeah. No, I didn't like, even see the comment. What you talking oh, no, about? Oh, no, no. It's, it's a bunch of, you know, everybody's like, yeah, Angel's such a good mom. But I want to talk to these people talking about, you need to learn to let your kids express their feelings. That's what's wrong with people. Blah, blah, blah. Shut up. I'm talking to y'all. And this is why. Marcus. Don't nobody know my kids more than me. Now, what, what irritates me, who is that? Close the door. What irritates me about that one that came in here doing that is he knows he's adorable. <laughs> he knows he's cute. And he will use that to his advantage every single chance he gets. Yeah, he will. I will listen to him get into a debate or an argument with one of his brothers. And he'll say, I'm going to get you in trouble. I'm going to go tell. And he'll come in with the crocodile tears like y'all saw, and he'll get to do. Eh, 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 eh. And no, I don't let him express those feelings because those aren't his feelings that I'm gonna let anybody in his house express. <laughs> so what y'all talking about? Oh, it's psychology. And it, it, shut up, y'all don't know these kids like I know them. Same way I don't know your kids. <laughs> so cut it out. I don't care nothing about it. The angel did the right thing. You got to let them express their feelings. And they grow up and they won't be able to express their feelings. Oh, a whole bunch of YouTube psychologists. Get out of oh here. Oh, my God. Y'all get on my nerves. Y'all, I'm talking to every single last year. But that's, that's exactly what he does. He knows oh, yeah, that he's... little face of his is adorable. He knows he can yank him. They oh, ain't no, even cry. They dinosaur is... tears. Is manipulative. And he will come in. And... <laughs> oh, you're cute now. You're cute and crying. No. That's what we're not doing. He said, it's not about psychology. You just need to stop being mean, Marcus. <laughs> That's nah. what Samantha, <laughs> our Samantha, said. Samantha, shut up. Samantha just as <laughs> mean as you are. That's I how I know. I know Samantha's <laughs> old asshole. Ain't nobody worried about her. Yeah, heifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we go into oh, my tank sleep pride story. One more story, thing. No, go we're ahead. not we going to talk no about one thing. We're going to talk about a posture. Yeah, thing. that's what I was saying. Oh, is that what your one more thing yeah. was? Okay, baby. I didn't know where you were going with it, but I'm going to tell yeah, you where man. I'm going with it. Apostrophe, y'all. When it comes to skincare, you just, it, it needs to be done right. 
you don't need to be cutting corners as far as in making sure you're seeing a professional, someone who knows what they're doing, someone who has your skin's best interests at heart. And that is what you'll get at apostrophe. Because a lot of times it is hard to navigate skincare products. There's so many out there. Like it is a multi-billion dollar industry. And you're like, okay, I'm having this problem. Will this work? Oh, I'm a woman of color. Will this work on melanated skin? There's so many things. And then you end up spending all this money on stuff that don't work. Hoping that you find the miracle product. This is where apostrophe comes in because it takes the guesswork out of your skincare because you are going to be working with a licensed medical professional, a licensed dermatologist. And apostrophe makes working with a licensed dermatologist much easier than what you would in the traditional sense. So with apostrophe, all you do is you go online you uh, fill out their questionnaire, their online quiz about your skincare goals and your medical history. You take a couple of selfies of your skin so that they can see it. And when I tell you right now, there ain't somebody's mama, just random mama or auntie or uncle coming up with skincare telling you, telling you put some pee on your face. <laughs> get that baby diaper rub yes. it across your face. Yeah, get, uh, put some toothpaste <laughs> on a pimple. Yeah. No. An actual <laughs> dermatologist customizes a treatment plan for you. So they can work with you if you are having um, redness and you want to reduce that, wrinkles, even dark spots, adult acne. They're going to give you treatment plans to help you where your skin is currently at. What's also great is that um, this board board, uh, board Dur certified, certified dermatologist. dermatologist. I was jumping words before I got there. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm roll over your feet, they man. are going to get back to you so quickly. Like, you're not going to be waiting. You know how when you try to make an appointment with dermatologists, you over here having to wait a whole week, month, or however, before you can actually get an appointment. Not with um, apostrophe. You're going to find out what your treatment results are so fast. You won't have to um, go wait in the pharmacy line to get your stuff because all your stuff is mailed right to you. So, this is what we want you to do. Yeah. Oh, and also, that's the reason why I chose apostrophe. It's because, let me tell you, y'all know Angel ain't got time. That's my, that is my theme for this year. Angel ain't got no time. I ain't got time. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> apostrophe makes it easy for me to get my skincare goals together without having to leave my house. So, we have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with a bar board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash is this. When you use our code is this, this code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash is this and click the begin visit. Then use our code is this, is this at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A P O S T R O P H E dot com slash is this. Is this. Use that code is this, is this to get your dermatology visit and save $15 off. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, Apostrophe. Amen. Yes, you're going to eat the. Okay, so. Um. Oh, one more thing. Just Go one ahead. More quick Go thing. ahead, baby. Uh, most of y'all know who we are. Y'all know what we do. Y'all know our family. Um, if we so choose not to have a babysitter during this podcast, if you don't like that, don't watch. What are you talking about now? I just don't like people coming at the, at, at the family and my kids. Like, we when are did a that family. happen? That was a comment. You, you, ain't, you gotta engage with the people, all right? I do. So, for the people, yeah, zoom in. For the people that ain't got a, that has a problem with our kids walking in, guess what? This is what they do. This Actually, is what we, doing. we do have a babysitter yeah, to watch. Yeah, and this. we had one last week. But hey, we got kids, so <coughs> deal with it. Um, no, but go but, ahead, babe. Here's the thing. Let me tell y'all. Let me drink my uh, little mm -hmm. refresher because something went down the wrong throat. Mm -hmm. They said one molecule will mm -hmm. take your life out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, one drop that just <laughs> throws everything off. Um. Our nanny is on vacation. So we had a replacement. That young lady's knee swole up and she can't walk. 
Okay. <laughs> so we are now back to it just being us. We actually uh, are using our current nanny to be able to be here when we're recording so that we don't have this in, these interruptions. But like I said, she's on vacation. Yeah. She was here last week, but they just walked in anyway. No, she was here last week. Yes, and so yeah. we only we had Sai come in because I could hear him crying. So I just wanted to know. And then also, I need a babysitter. Sheesh, you need to shut up. Also, yeah. I'm on tour, mm-hmm. so I'm going to be using some of my professional time to also spend time with my kids. Yeah. So it's not a thing where they're going to always be separate, even when they can, because I don't get to see my. This babies. is what happens when I go down through the. Car. You got. I don't know how you got to read. You got to really no for real. Okay. And I, it's not that I'm don't. It's not that I mind you checking folk because sometimes folk do need to be reminded that this is YouTube. This is not CBS. This is not NBC. We literally have full access and see oh. full say over how we do. Oh this. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have uh, full. You know, most people, most people, majority of the people who watch us watch us for free. Yeah. They are not paying to watch us. So yeah, I rarely get time to do over. that, and I guess this is what happens. But I want you to refocus your energy on, on the, the positive stuff. Absolutely. And give those people, I want you to start calling them out. I saw what you said, Christina I Renee, know, yeah. uh, that you like this episode and it made you laugh. Yeah, zoom in on that. I, that's what I want for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> you focus on that. I'm going to focus on that. <laughs> uh, but go ahead, babe. So, Speak on it. Uh, Tank Sleep Pride story. Um, the birthday party was something that came together last minute. First of all, I want to say thank you for being uh, an active part of the planning committee. Mm-hmm. Usually my husband is not. Usually I run an idea by him. He go, yeah, sounds good. And then I'm back to planning. Yeah, because I ain't to be doing the most when it comes to these parties. No, I'm no. like, you need cake, ice cream. And a, and a jumpy house. That's all you need every year. Anyways, because of COVID, um, obviously, we wanted to keep it small. This is not like my birthday party when the kids weren't here. Me and Marcus being vaccinated. Not to me, not to say that we're not vulnerable to catching uh, COVID, but we knew majority of the people that were at our house during my birthday party were vaccinated. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and their home bodies ain't out in the streets. So we weren't. Uh, worried about it, but with the kids being home, we definitely wanted to keep it uh, smaller and uh, make sure that there was somebody of Mars age since it was his birthday party. Mm-hmm. So our girlfriend Denora mm-hmm. has a son that's six months younger than him, but six times bigger. He's big old fat. Chunky <laughs> he is baby. enormous. He's so big and so fat. He's, He's so like cute. the baby off boss baby. He's like tall, girthy, <laughs> big, <laughs> and he's younger than Amar. He's so big. Oh, um, there you go. <clears throat> And then um, my sis Quinn obviously came through because her daughter being the only child, she just be like, when is somebody doing something so my baby can be there? <laughs> so <clears throat> we uh, we uh, rented a bouncy house. Marcus took care of that. We rented a table that was the, you know, the per- kids. perfect size for Mar to be able to sit at, even though he was sitting at the big people's table some of the time as well. And it was just... So low key, Marcus uh, grilled, and I could actually tell. You know, most people be like, you know, it's a kid's birthday party. These kids don't really care. I could tell Amar had a really good time. Oh yeah, he was having a good time. He had a blast. He wasn't overwhelmed because, like, a lot of times when we've gone places, like especially if we were to go to something at um, Kevin and Melissa's house, he can get overwhelmed by the of the adults there like because you know Mar don't be messing with folk like that he is very much so his daddy he's very particular about the people he kicks it with uh but he was so like i mean you it seemed like he knew that bouncy house was there for him yeah he just smiling even though he had a couple of bumps and scrapes on the day he recovered quickly yeah and went back to playing <laughs> he, he got this water table for him and uh, Denora's baby walks out there like right after they got here, and he got comfortable. He walks outside and walks up to Amar. Amar got this water table. He's got this cup. He's been throwing water at people. He doused that water in his face so quick and aggressive. He was tearing Denora's baby apart. He took the super soaker and was shooting him in the back at close range, and laughing. 
Aiden, uh, that's the Norris son, oh, kept turned around gosh. like, what is happening? Then he shot him in the side oh, of his, he shot him like this. It went like this. Aiden was like, like, bruh, <laughs> what is going on? But he was having such a, the balloon, like even the balloons. The balloons made. Yeah, they, they try to add a cow for my emoji. I'm sticking to the car, y'all. For the knife, y'all ain't focus. I'm on focus. I'm, it's the Patreon, y'all. The, the media family. They ain't here having a whole. Co- I don't even think they listen to us. They are. They having a whole conversation. <laughs> I just cannot. Yes, baby, talk about it. Um. So yeah, it was nice, and it is also crazy to see the the shift happening. Mm-hmm. You don't even know what the shift is. Him liking me. How'd you know? Because I know you. He, Amar, is slowly but surely becoming a daddy's boy. And it's not that part that's like, oh, my baby is not is not clinging to me. It's how my husband is changing because Amar is slowly but surely becoming a daddy's boy. How am I changing? Marcus is just... He's more of a, I don't want to call him a doting dad, but he is a little bit more of a, okay, here. Not that you didn't do like stuff before, but now he's very much so like, if Amar needed something before, I'd be the one that'd be quicker to jump up, get it done, do it. Now I see you doing it more, and I'm like, I was going to say, when you're not here, he's independent as hell. I know he is. Because <laughs> I, I just be like, hey, you want some, your sippy cups up there in your crib? See if you can go get it because I'm not getting up. I'm busy. I know he's independent, but still, once he needs stuff, you're just like, I see you doing it. And I'm like, okay, like when he scraped his little forehead. Typical Marcus would be like, that's all, it's all right. Clean it off and let no. the air get to it. Let the air get to it because it wasn't bleeding. Actually, no, it was because he he fell. He jumped off. He fell outside. Marcus brought him in. He said he jumped out of the bouncy house all hard. Um, and now, I can already see that he's missing skin on his forehead. And I'm like, oh, God, he didn't land it on his face. Marcus doesn't see it yet. Then Marcus looks down and over, and he said, oh, he hit his head. Oh, buddy. God. I've been like that with my kids. If they, see, if they really hurt. Yes, but still. Remember how Kai took me out when he scraped up his face? Yes, I know. I ain't changed. No, you have. I'm so sorry. Then he was like, "Yeah, we go. uh, Y'all get it more." No, I'm telling you. All right. I see the shift. Let me have my take sweet pride story. So he goes and um, what was I say? He has little Marcus get the band aid, and so I'm thinking I'm about to have to put this uh band aid on. Because Marcus is getting the grill and stuff ready. Nope. Comes back in. I'm used to you not being here now. (laughs) Ow, boy, quit. To doctor it up. And he be hurting his baby's feelings. Go on. He be hurting his Samara's feelings all the time. They about to be best friends. They are about to be besties. You got anything else? It. And you love it. Look at it. He can't even keep a straight face. He loves it. He does. He's feeling all the all the extra endorphins. Yeah, man. And by the time I get off a tour, you're going to be crying like Sai I told about you, all these kids done turned me into an old bitch. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying, by the time I get off a tour, he's going to be doing... So, um, I checked Kai's homework, and uh, he did so good with the spelling bee. Uh, I said it a long time ago. I can't so watch good. cartoon movies without crying now. Can't watch uh, it. <laughs> yeah, he's about to be a whole mess, and that's all right. That started with it. Marcus. I love every bit. I said, of why is this bottom care about these bugs crawling up in his house? <laughs> when Marcus was young, I like, started throwing bugs and set for spiders. They die righteously. Uh, righteously, yeah. he's a whole, a whole mess. Well, but you know what can help? Who can help you out with spiders if you are terrified of them and it's causing you anxiety? Who can help? Better help. Oh, can they know, baby? Hey, listen, oh. <laughs> the baby's like, hey, <laughs> listen, y'all know that we are um, huge fans of Better Help here. On is this going to cause an argument? Get out. Mental health has been on 
everybody's radar here lately, especially with the Olympics and Simone Biles um, having to withdraw from uh, competing in certain events in order to focus on not just her physical health, but also her medical health. And, you know, sometimes uh, mental health, excuse me, sometimes mental health can seem like it's just a buzzword, right? But this is something real. And that's why we're happy that uh, BetterHelp is sponsoring this episode. So... If there is something interfering with your goals or something preventing you from having happiness, we would love for you to check out Better Health and they will assess, uh, assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 20, excuse me, in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line or self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. They have a broad range of expertise that uh, may not be available locally and there is service for uh, available for clients worldwide you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist and you'll get a timely and thoughtful response plus you can schedule weekly video and phone sessions so you never have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy better help is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy um and free to change therapists as needed um, Amar is possibly needing some better help right now because he's like, my dad is not helping me the way I want to be helped. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. Better help wants you to start living a happier life today. This is what we want you to do. And we're serious about this. I don't even care if they weren't sponsoring this uh, podcast. We want all the people that listen to us, that are entertained by us, even the people that be hating on us, but watch us. <laughs> we want everybody to be able to be in a place mentally where they can thrive and where they can be safe and where they can be authentic. So we want you to check out betterhelp.com slash argue. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. The special offer for Is This Going to Cause an Argument listeners, get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash argue. And we thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Okay. So you guys, Marcus and I are going to be talking about Y'all know what's getting ready to happen in a couple weeks. School is in session, okay? And, oh my God. You know, I think when the pandemic hit, I think all of us who are parents and even educators and principals, I think we were all like, if we can just get to summer break, then we can figure out what the heck we're going to do after this, right? Um. You come in all late, argue. Uh, but now we're back at the beginning of of the school year again. And a lot of school districts have made certain changes oh, to try to make kids coming back into school um, safer. Because, yes, I don't think anybody would disagree that in-person learning um, is by far better than virtual learning, especially for adolescents. Like virtual learning pales in comparison for most children. Now there are some children who social anxiety is so high for them that in person is not good. But for the most part, um, your like baseline child, in person learning is better. However, comma, now that there's 58 million variants, okay, the yeah. whole Greek alphabet then showed up. Yeah, absolutely. Lambda, Zeta, Delta. I mean, Delta is the one because Delta is always or do things the best um, is the one that's y'all out the, here. Y'all the best at taking these people out. <laughs> yes, we're, we're the best at being contagious. The best at being the worst. Just... <laughs> but there are like umpteen million variables of uh, yeah. COVID out. So going to turn into a DNA strand. It only takes one. It's going to have another name. Exactly. 
So, um, with that being said, and with it, not the Delta variant, based off of what is being put out by medical professionals in the news, is more highly contagious, and it yeah, is. Yeah, they having, say it spreads as easy as chicken pox. Yes, and it is having to um, having a stronger effect on younger children, unlike the the version of COVID we were seeing at the beginning of this pandemic. So with LAUSD, unlike a lot of these Midwest cities, our classrooms are smaller. Smaller. In yes. in actual space. Yeah. I ain't talking physical, about the actual yeah, student physical size. Physical size of the classroom, square footage is smaller. And then our schools are overpopulated. So, yeah. so you have a smaller class with more people. With more students. LAUSD, in my personal opinion, it, they well, let me tell you what they're actually doing. They are opening up school at full capacity, full day school, at the start of the school year. Yeah. So that means that if the class, the first grade class, has 24 students that are registered, they are expecting 24 students to show up on the first day of school and to be there from the 8.30 to the 2.30 bell. Um, with their teacher and their TA. Now, what I am, what we are really like not here for <laughs> is putting our children at risk. Right. Now, the, at the end of the day, I honestly think if Kai or Sai were to contract COVID, that their bodies would respond to it like a cold. They would have a fever. They would be stopped up. They might have headaches, but I, I uh, and they might even lose taste and smell. They might even have those, but like hospitalized, I highly doubt it. Okay. Yeah. No, we. I mean, we don't know about this new variant. Like as far as because the original COVID, what it was doing, but these these variants, they have different effects. They do. No, I say all that to say I, I honestly. I, as, as their mother, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am, do not think that they would, if they caught it, they would be one of the kids that would be hospitalized. However, again, comma, if my children get COVID, guess who can't work right. in a, a couple of facets? Either one of us. Yeah. Now, most of Marcus's work takes place in the home right now with him doing the merch and him making content. But y'all know... Angelita is on tour. And while the tour is just additional revenue for our family, it wasn't something that we were budgeting in into our yearly uh, like revenue. It's still not some revenue that I want to lose, right? right? And it's also not something that I want to put to here or Kevin or Josh or anybody else working with in jeopardy of having to cancel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So A big part of that is, is it's disturbing of how... To me, it just seems like LAUSD is being very uh, uh, irresponsible. Well, yeah, my oh, it's, that's what I was gonna say. My opinion is that they're doing this just for the federal dollar. Yeah, it's only for the federal dollar. It's like even though these we're seeing, starting to see spikes both in like in the country, so we're starting to see these spikes. They're not gonna shut anything down again mm. anywhere in the United States, and the reason being is because. This government cares a lot more about the dollar than they do people's lives. Mm -hmm. And they saw what it did to shutting everything down in order to save people's lives. It's like, no, everybody needs to go home, stay home till we get a handle on this thing. They don't, I don't care if 40, 100 million people yeah. die from this. They're going to keep everything open. Mm -hmm. And the only reason LAUSD is going back is for their federal dollar because they do not get the funds if students aren't in class in seats yeah even though teachers are still teaching virtually they do not get the funds that people aren't actually there and it sounds like to me some laws need to change because these teachers are still teaching they need to offer the uh, give the funds up the same as if they would if they weren't in uh you know physically there yeah is if they are there um so the only thing that, that's very disturbing is you're sending these kids to school and they're in close proximity with each other and a lot of these kids are going home to families and if they go home to family and they spread whatever they got from school back at home, it's going to affect a whole lot more people. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure this is all, you know, Captain Obvious type stuff, but this is absolutely ridiculous that they're having them go back, even though they're testing and they're doing the little fake temperature checks that don't do crap. <laughs> I don't know nobody that 
had a fever and was like, oh, maybe I got COVID. And that, that's what that, that's how they found out. Ain't nobody walked in nowhere and said, let me check your temperature. Oh, go get tested. Is it positive yet? That ain't happened. Right, right. We're checking temperatures. Who gives? Nobody care about no goddamn temperature check. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh. They were doing that at work. Like, what are you checking my temperature for? Yeah. If it was that simple to catch, guess what? It'd be a lot easier to catch. Yeah, it would be. It would be before people had it. Like, come on. And so we now. So we're not sending pie inside. We are sending our eldest to school because he is actually eligible for the vaccine Mm -hmm. in less than 12 days of being at school because he turns 12. That is going to be his birthday gift is you ready to go get this shot in your arm. Um, so backed up, get, let's get to it. So we are sending him so he can, um, start the school year off, uh, with everyone and not come in like a month late. Uh, Because that's pretty much what it would be if we just wait until he's vaccinated. And I'm a little less, while I do know middle schoolers can be uh, ignorant as well and Mm. unresponsible because they are still adolescents, I'm a little less like... This is there's no way yeah, it's gonna we, work. Yeah, we can we can show him, we can make him understand, and he already does mm-hmm. the severity of it and how important it is for him to stay safe. Keep yeah. your hands off your eyes, out of your face. Don't touch anything. Keep your mask on. Don't let nobody be all up in your face. We can coach him through that and have him understand that while he's at school. To where the twins, it's like even though they actually did pretty good when we were traveling. Mm-hmm. No, in the they, airport, they actually do really good at keeping their mask on and not touching their faces and stuff. But you add it was but you them traveling, a thousand other kids with right? Us. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you you add, uh, when they were traveling, it was mom and dad, and then just their brothers. You're adding just a teacher who they don't know, right? And then a bunch of kids that they're just meeting who no telling what their family believes in their own household as far as in how they um deal with hygiene and not the spread of this. So the topic of this podcast oh, is I thought you already brought it up. I did, but uh, this is kind of the the preface oh. is how we really feel about where our kids are at educational wise because of this pandemic and what in the world we're about to do to fix it because mm-hmm. I honestly think one of the twins is not ready for anybody's first grade. I do think he learned stuff in kindergarten, but I, he, the what he learned in kindergarten still felt it's still very pre-K mm-hmm. it's still not even I don't even think he could ace kindergarten if we did kindergarten again <clears throat> yeah and so LAUSD oh, yeah, that, would, that would be me if I had to do virtual learning I would be Kai yeah like I wouldn't be the one like flourishing from it and getting a bunch of stuff like I would need to be in person um yeah. And I could, I could only imagine how many other kids are doing that. It's like, how much have these kids in general, how much have we actually lost in education this past year and even going into this next year, but especially last year? And how do you weigh your children being, and family being safe versus sending them back to school? Right. Oh, we're going for safe. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I... um. What I also realize is that, like, yeah, while there's a lot of kids going through this, with them doing in person, LAUSD is <clears throat> not doing virtual they what the way they did it for the last school year season. So last season, the kids were still taught by their teacher virtually. Even if they did, because this is LAUSD's tried to be reason, and it pisses me off so much. Last year, the second half of the year, maybe no, not even second half. It was the second half of the last semester. Mm-hmm. They started doing partial in-person days. So it would be less students for half days. So just think of it like this. You have 24 kids in a class. 12 would be at the top of the day. They would go home after three hours. 12 would be at the end of the day. They would go home after three hours. So then exposing your kids to less possible um, ways to spread it or to get it themselves. So apparently it went really well. 
because they were doing, you know, testing all the time as far as in COVID testing, PPE, mm. out of this world. So they're saying because they did so good with half day, half classrooms, that full day, full classrooms is going to go just as well. It's just like this is comparing apples to oranges. It literally, it's literally like lifting weights. And it was like, well, I was able to do 50 pounds. Actually, there'll be 25 at that point because you're doing half day and half the students. Yes. Maybe I should jump up. I've done lifted 25 pounds. Let me jump up to 100. I should be able to get it. No. This, <laughs> this sounds like I was swimming in a pool. Uh, 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 no, no, no. I was swimming in a very large pool with guppies. Nothing, nothing really yeah. bad happened. Now I'm in the middle of the ocean with sharks all around. Let Everything me cut my should hair. work. <laughs> Everything should work <laughs> the same. Um, so we are trying to figure this out. I called a. You mean, hold on. You remember what was it last year? Or oh, wait, that was definitely last year. Was it? I don't know which states like opened up their schools and you know, like within a week. They shut down. <laughs> like, cause like yeah. cases spiked like crazy. Of course, it was spreading like crazy. And Marcus, this is what's gonna be crazy because Marcus is gonna be over school this year, so he's got to do. Help they with already homework. they're starting at a deficit right there. He's got to do homework. He's got to do drop offs. He's got to do breakfast, which will be magic spoon breakfast, and he's gonna have to get this all to happen like perfectly. I mean, granted, starting the day off with magic spoon is probably the smartest thing he could do. Not only just for the kids, but also for him. Because you got to feed your brain and your mind right so that you can learn, okay? Because you got to learn yourself something. And you don't want to be filling it with a bunch of yucky stuff. And Magic Spoon was like, hey, we ain't got no artificial sugars, Playboy, okay? We ain't got no uh, 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 nasty, uh, uh, unhealthy foods up in here. All that junk? Absolutely not. We've got zero grams of sugar. We've got 13 to 14 grams of protein. We've only got four net grams of carbs in each serving. That's only 140 calories a serving. Bop, 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 bop. It is keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. You can build your own box or get a variety pack with available flavors. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. And Magic Spoon is bringing back two super popular flavors, cookies and cream and maple waffle permanently, period. Permanently. That's what I said. It didn't I said. sound like it. Goes permanently on. is what I said, period. When these flavors were first introduced for a limited time, they sold out extremely quick. So, we wanted to let our listeners know they would be, uh, they should make sure to get these again or try them for the first time because they're delicious and indulgent. My favorite flavor still is that good old Frosted. It's just, mm, it's just got the right amount of sugar that you want, or sugary taste. It's not sugar. The sweet taste that you want for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's your name? You know what mine is. Is it that blueberry? Blueberry. Blueberry, yeah, I'm loving it. Um, and I, as I've said before, you mix that, that peanut butter with that chocolate. Come on and live your life with a little peanut butter cup. So this is what we want you to do. Go to magicspoon.com slash argue, argue to grab your delicious cereal and try today. And be sure to use our promo code argue, argue. at checkout to save 50, oh, $5 off your order. $5, you guys. Um, <laughs> and Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's back with 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash argue, argue and use our code argue, argue to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this Thank you, Magic Spoon. episode. But what I was really about to say is, so I called Tudor, tutoring company yesterday. Oh, are you throwing in another... No, <laughs> called a tutoring company. Actually, I hit them up two weeks ago. She called me back, but I was on a flight. And so I finally put it in my to-do list to call them back. And I was like, I'm looking for somebody to tutor my six-year-olds two to three times a week. Y'all, the price that she quoted me, if I get at least eight hours for the month, which I would want 16 because it would be uh, two hours for each child a week. So we would do like a th- Tuesday, Thursday, 
that somebody would mm-hmm. tutor them for an hour. They charge $55 an hour. And that's the lowest rate because I would be getting at least eight hours. And I was like, Dirty. That, so that would equate to about a thousand dollars. It'd be like nine hundred and something dollars a month. And I wanted to be like, eh, they can just be stupid then. Mm-hmm. If this is if this is what it comes down to, and it would be virtual, which virtual, as we all know, we just finished talking about it, is safer. However, yeah, I'm like, somebody needs to be in front of my kids, yeah. and if I'm going to pay that money, then I just need somebody who's going to be in their mask. Stand in front of my kids mm-hmm. and work with them. But yeah, for fifty five, I'm like, look, I did awful in elementary school, and I turned out just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Uh, so we're now trying to figure out what somebody said. <laughs> Alex said, "I hope she uh, meant fifty five Canadian dollars <laughs> because I'm pretty sure." <laughs> Did me fifty five American. American, so much money. It's so much money, and I feel like we're being put between a rock and a hard place. Because this is what I do feel like LAUS is going. LAUSD is going to try to do. They're going to try. They're going to try to accelerate mm-hmm. the learning in the classroom, so that the people who have chosen. That's what I was about to tell y'all. Let me tell y'all about this janky ass program LAUSD is putting into place. For the virtual. Tell me. So, as I was saying, last year, half day, you were still taught by your teacher virtually. You were taught by that teacher in person, also virtually. This time, they're like, we're not doing that to the teachers, which makes sense. If the teachers are in the classroom all day, they won't be able to teach your child virtually. Right. So, they have this program called City of Angels, which is independent learning. K through tw- K through five will only get three hours of instruction a day. Nobody at their school can tell me anything about this program. I'm like, do I get the laptop from you all or from them? They were like, oh, we don't know. Yes, ma'am. They like the brick and mortar schools have no type of like communication with the virtual school. So there's not even like, let's align the curriculums mm-hmm. so that if a child comes back to in seat, that they will be on the same page. They are trying to set these kids up to fail. Yeah. That's just, nothing about that sounds right. <laughs> like it's, gonna, it's a recipe for disaster. They, they, they mess it with the right one. Because let me tell you, while I'm not going to pay that woman $55 an hour, I'm not going to do that. I will put my money where my mouth is. And I have somebody up in here mm-hmm. that's going to have these boys, when they do return, be further along than them kids that are sitting up in that classroom passing on COVID to each other. Yeah. Because I was really like, wait a minute. Y'all ain't got no real information. Y'all are not. They're, they're trying to make it so unattractive for the kids to do yeah. the City of Angels. Um, because that's what the program is called. So that parents would be like, oh, well, I just put them in school. Like, nah. I can't do this. I can't. You know, this is the thing that I am, I will acknowledge, even though I'm not acknowledging it now. I will acknowledge that there are parents out there who don't really have a choice. Right. They cannot, we have been awarded the flexibility mm-hmm. to say, all right, y'all going to be here at home because daddy will be here. We have a nanny. Like I said, we, we have been afforded to be able to hire a tutor. And we know there are some parents who are like, if it's between me keeping the bills, the, the lights on and feeding you, I have to choose that. And we right. just going to have to plead the blood of Jesus on you and uh, <laughs> send you on to school and pray. If you get it, you just get a cold. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I do understand that that is the case for a lot of parents. And so they're being put between a rock and a hard place. But I, I still blame the school district for not coming up with more attractive yeah. plans of actions. They need better flexibility for both the people that would like to keep their kids at home and for the people that can't. Yeah. 
Like to just shove all the kids in one classroom when you know your classrooms are tiny as hell. Right. Like it's because the be fact of the matter is infected petri dish. Okay. Because the fact of the matter is you still putting that parent who's at work at risk because if that right. child gets COVID, guess what they got to be back They're at home. home for a whole two weeks. For a whole two weeks. Hopefully it's just two weeks. Yes. At minimum. At minimum a whole two weeks. So it, it just irritates me so much because I don't know what's being said in these meeting rooms. Mm-hmm. and it. But it doesn't sound like sh- shit's making sense. It doesn't at all to me. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that this was the solution. It, it was just... Just just put them all. They were like, school is going to look a lot like it did pre-pandemic. But we're, we're still in a pandemic. <laughs> we're still in the pandemic. We can't pretend like we're not. We can't pretend like. And this is, and I'm so frustrated because they know this is not the difference between people choosing to get vaccinated and people who not getting vaccinated. They know none of these kids can have the vaccine right. currently. That, like, yeah, they can't get a vaccine and yes. Like, they know that, for the most part, there are no fifth graders that are 12 years old. Most kids, there might be, like, one or two, but most kids that are in the fifth grade are 10 and 11. The vaccine is not available to 11-year-olds. So they know that it's mostly, like, the the vaccine protection does not kick in until middle school. And some middle schoolers, like my son, he's one of the youngest, though, are still not eligible for the vaccine. But you know these elementary school students. Yeah, they nasty. Kids is all over they each other's face. And I'm telling you. Like I'm constantly yelling to these kids that we in public. I'm like, don't touch stuff. They will. My sons are so eager to pull that handle at a urinal. I'm like, you don't touch that <laughs> goddamn urinal. Whatever you do. We in the stall. Don't don't flush. But it, you don't flush at home. Why are you trying to flush here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I get it. Uh, Meredith uh, Lowry says, we have a choice too, and I think he'll be worse emotionally if we keep him at home. This is our... Oh, I already yeah, know. No. This is... My kids are not going to... Without us putting some money towards it... Yeah, that's it, why we absolutely have... We have to get a tutor. That's without question. Mm-hmm. But we would rather spend the money and get a tutor than put them at risk. We're, thank God we're able to do that. Yes. To get a tutor. And we also acknowledge that we have twins. We don't have a singular child. So while their uh, social emotional is not where it could be if they had more kids and kids that weren't related to them that they were functioning with. uh, We also know that there's a lot of uh, social emotional growing that they're not going to do unless they are around other kids. I would rather... I personally... Because I have the option to, would rather my kids be stunted emotionally a little bit mm-hmm. and even intelligently, but healthy and not F up our whole living situation because I can no right. longer work um, in a bunch of the things that I work in than to um, send them and them being put uh, at risk of being uh, one of the culprits in spe- spreading this disease. Um, so yeah, I don't really know where they're going to be at the end of the school year. I know a tutor will help that we had a tutor for little Marcus going from kinder oh, to yeah, first. That was a huge help. It was a huge help. Yeah. He was doing Kumon actually. So if we can find somebody that really is good at tutoring, not like, I mean, I was okay at tutoring, but I need somebody that was better than what I was. I need somebody yeah. who's like, enjoys it, is not doing it just because they uh, need to be able to pay their or somebody, rent. Yeah, or somebody that's going to struggle just as bad as they do, so it won't be me. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you like, it's, all that stuff that, that I never used as an adult, no, nah, I don't remember. I don't, what are you talking about? I don't remember none of that. Don't let, don't let them ask me. So why I need to know this? Don't ask me. I do not know. <laughs> so yeah, we shall see. The, the other thing that sucks, this Delta variant really put a wrench in a plan. I had really considered us putting a mar in daycare mm-hmm. this coming fall. Cause I knew enough people that had did daycare and their kids didn't get COVID and that these daycare centers really came up with 
somewhat of some sort of plan to make things um, mm -hmm. go well. And I was like, let's go ahead and get rid of them. Send them on. And then that Delta variant said... <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Well, why was I about to do the same thing? <laughs> that Delta variant came in something. <laughs> and I was like, so he's going to be at home? Is that what we're saying? He's here at the house? Perfect. So, yeah, Amar is just going to be, he's just going to be he's Amar. Be, yeah. <laughs> Lord help him. He's going to be, that's going to be your, your buddy all day. <laughs> my angel, call my company. <laughs> <laughs> They're expecting me to work, Make me to be at work the next week and a half. So, <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, sorry. They, they, they sound very excited to have me back. Just, <laughs> to be honest, I'm excited to be back. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> oh, I'll check it out, Meredith. Thank you for the recommendation. She said, "Con Company Academy." I mean, well, uh. Jesus. Oh, Tiffany Loney, my internet bestie, she said she starts summer school with zero cases. The classes were so small. Mm. See, that's what we need. We need a small, yeah. a small situation. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add to it? I ain't got nothing to add to that. Okay. You did a lot of talking. I know. It's all good. But I know you were tired, so I was trying I to get I am tired, though. I wanted to chime in. I was going to wake up. You chimed in a couple times. I did a couple to... times, not a lot. Here comes our third host. So we want to see if he has anything he would like to add. Do you want to add anything? Uh, no. Where's your sunglasses? He was eating his uh, his uh, breakfast with sunglasses on at the table before you went and got him. Sounds about right. All right, guys. We want to again thank our sponsors, Apostrophe, Apostrophe Better Help, and, and Magic Spoon. Spoon. Please make sure you use our promo codes and our special links when you're checking them out so they can know that you are a listener of Is This Going to Cause an Argument podcast. Per use, you can follow my husband and Marcus Ain't on the Gram and uh -huh. Marcus Ain't on the Book. That's right. Mm -mm -mm. You can follow me at That Chick Angel on all platforms. <laughs> And you can follow our new channel, Tanksley TV. Follow my YouTube page, That Chick Angel TV. Ah, 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 ah. That Chick Angel ah, ah, TV. Is this going to cause Stop an it. argument? <laughs> Podcast will be here next week. We're going to make you dance. We're going to make you laugh and make you move your feet. Marcus is She would do this for hours. I just want y'all to know. He's trying to zoom And that was not in. funny. Thank you so much, <laughs> Patreon, for being our internet friends. So until next time, till you see us once again, <laughs> make sure you do real good. And don't you sin. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you, you <laughs> it lied, yeah, it, it did. Rhymes. All right, but that's good enough. I -T -G -T -C -A. Thank y'all for tuning in with us. We greatly you appreciate all it. Have a good day. Y'all have a Let's good one, Let's see fam. if Marcus can end the podcast. Yeah. Because he don't know we are still talking to the Patreon. I know don't you still talking. Don't do it then. Uh, you need to end the volume on a recording. Oh, yes, there you go. And stop the recording. That chick angel. That chick angel.